Have you ever wondered why beams and columns are very commonly used nowadays in construction of multi-story buildings? Because instead of providing RCC beams and columns on each floor, if same material is used for the whole wall construction, let's say bricks or stones instead of concrete, which are generally cheaper than concrete, the construction cost of the building will be less and also there will be minimum requirements of expensive plants and machines. The simple answer of this question is yes, we can definitely skip the beams and columns construction and actually this type of structures are one of the earliest form of construction which is known as load bearing structures. In this type of structures, the loads from the roof and floor is transferred to the walls below and walls are designed and constructed in such a way that they are able to transfer the superimposed load as well as self-weight to the foundation below. But as walls are the active structural member in this type of load bearing structures and they should be able to withstand all the forces from the floors above them. As we go down on the lower levels, the walls need to be stronger and so thicker walls are provided on the lower floors which will reduce the usable area of the rooms. Also for the foundation of load bearing structures, whole walls have to be taken deep down into the subsoil. Thus, this type of structures can only be used in case of some specific subsoil conditions and most importantly, they can be used in residential buildings only where the number of story are limited, maybe up to two to three story. Then what to do for high rise building construction? So for multi-story buildings, RCC framed structures are widely used recently. This structure usually consists of a frame or skeleton of concrete. The frame is made up of different members like slab, columns and beams which are firmly connected to each other. On a typical floor of a framed structure, beams are provided beneath the slab. They are horizontal components and they are designed to carry loads perpendicular to their longitudinal direction. Beams thus support weight of buildings, floors, ceiling and roofs and provide uniform distribution of loads and connect the whole frame together. Now, the loads applied to the beam result in reaction forces at all the support points of the beam. I will not go into technical details much, but in simple terms, loads on the beam are further transferred to the columns in the form of compressive forces. Columns are considered the most important members of building because if other members fail, it may not be too dangerous, but failure of a column would lead to total collapse of the building. Finally, the column transfer all the superimposed loads to the foundation below. The walls are made after the frame is constructed and gain strength. In case of load bearing structures, all walls on the same floor have to be built simultaneously because they are going to support the slab. So construction process is very slow. But in framed structures, RCC frame is constructed first and as soon as it gains strength, external and partition walls can be constructed simultaneously on different floors though this is not standard practice. Mostly walls are subjected to self weight only and they do not participate in load transfer actively. Thus walls can be of same size on all the floors of a building and larger rooms which are covered free from walls can be easily provided. Unlike load bearing structures, even if you remove any partition wall for larger space or even if part of exterior wall is removed, let's say to provide larger opening, it will not cause the failure of the building in framed structures. The space between columns on the ground level can remain as open space which can be utilized as parking or as commercial area. 
Also, as walls do not transfer the superimposed loads from the floors above, only columns have to be taken deep down into the subsoil. Thus, this type of structures can be used for any type of subsoil conditions and are widely used for multi-story buildings. The most important difference between these two type of superstructure is the resistance to earthquake forces. Bricks in load bearing structure are stiff and they do not allow even small movement in the structure. So in case of vibration due to earthquake, if any small damage occurs in any wall of a load bearing structure, the whole building will collapse in no time. But in framed structure, concrete having high compressive strength along with reinforcement having high tensile strength are used in design of beams and columns, which are more capable of withstanding heavy loads and vibrations. So if designed and constructed properly, the whole framework will not collapse even if the walls fail to withstand load or at the least, it will take some time for the whole building to fall so that loss of lives will be reduced. So that's it for today's video. If you like the video, hit like button and share it with your friends. See you in the next video.